Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about instance of Oracle database. We will see how to manage it, which files it requires and start up and shut down of an instance. To start an instance, the Oracle server reads the initialization parameter file. This file contains many parameters and their values. There are two kinds of parameters, explicit having an entry in the file, implicit no entry within the file but assuming the Oracle default values. Multiple files can be used for a single database to optimize performance in different situations. Two types of initialization parameter files exist. First one is static parameter file, P file, commonly referred as initSID.ora, where SID is our database SID. The P file is a text file that can be maintained using an operating system editor like Notepad or VI editor. The parameter file is read only during instance startup. If the file is modified, the instance must be shut down and restarted in order to make the new parameter values effective. Some parameters are dynamic, which means that they can be modified while the instance is running. Changes to dynamic parameters are not affected in the P file. By default, the P file is located in the dollar oracle underscore home slash tbs directory on a Unix machine and the name init.sid.ora. A sample init.ora file is created by the universal installer during installation. This sample init.ora file can be used to create an instance specific init.sid.ora. Second file is persistent parameter file. SP file commonly referred to as SP file sid.ora. SP file is a binary file. This file is not meant to be modified manually and always resides on the server side. By default, the file is located in dollar oracle underscore home slash dbs on Unix server and has a default name in the format of SP file sid.ora. Once the file is created, it is maintained by the Oracle server. The SP file provides the ability to make changes to the database persistent across shutdown and startup. The alter system command is used to change the value of instance parameters. Now what does parameter file contain? Parameter file contains various parameters and options like a list of instance parameters which are required for instance startup name of the database the instance is associated with, allocation for memory structures of the system global area like their size, what to do with the field online redo log files, the names and locations of the control files and information on undo segments. Now let's see how to create a P file. When we install Oracle software, one sample init.ora file is created automatically. By using this sample file, we can create our P file. If our database is already running and is using SP file, then from SP file we can create a P file. Its default location on Unix is $oracle underscore home slash dbs. Creating a SP file from P file. SP file is created after a database is running and functional. We can create SP file from P file using this syntax create SP file from P file. Here we can give location of SP file and its name and also from which P file we want to create the SP file if we are using many P files for database instance startup. Whenever we start an instance then it reads the initialization files in the following order. First it reads SP file sid.ora. If this file is not found then it reads SP file.ora that is default SP file for an instance. But if it's also not configured, then I need SID.ora and if it's not, then default P file. Startup. Let's see different stages of startup and shutdown. First stage is no mount stage. Usually we would start an instance in this stage during database creation or the recreation of the control files. In this initialization file is read, if we specify the P file parameter, with startup, it overrides the default behavior. SG is allocated, background processes are started, alert sid.log files and the trace files are opened. Next stage is mount stage. We mount database for various tasks 
like renaming data files, enabling and disabling redo log archiving options, performing full database recovery. In this case, database is associated with previously started instance. Control file which is specified in the parameter file is located and opened. Then control file is read to obtain the names and status of the data files and the redo log files. After mount stage comes open stage. Normal database operations means that an instance is started and the database is mounted and open. With the normal database operation, any valid users can connect to the database and perform typical data access operations. Opening the database includes opening the online data files and opening the online redo log files. If any of the data files or online redo log files is not present, when we attempt to open the database, the Oracle server returns an error. During this final stage, the Oracle server verifies that all the data files and online redo log files can be opened and checks the consistency of the database. If necessary, the system monitor background process as mon initiates instance recovery. Startup command. It is used to start the database in various modes. I will explain this command's option one by one. First option is open. Open options with startup command enables users to assess the database. With this, we can specify some other options like read only or read write. Read only means restricts users to read only transactions, preventing them from generating read log information. This feature is specially useful for a standby database to offload query processing from the production database. And in read write mode, database is in read write mode so that users can generate read logs. Mount mode mounts the database for certain DB activities but does not provide user access to the database. No mount mode. No mount mode creates the SGA and starts off the background processes but does not provide access to the database. Next is p file is equal to file name. If we specify this option with startup command, then it enables a non-default parameter file to be used to configure the instance. Force option. If instance is already running, then it will be aborted before performing a normal startup. Restrict. Restrict enables only users with restricted session privilege to access the database. It is useful when we perform structure maintenance or a database export and import. Recover options. With recover option begins media recovery when the database starts. Next is shutdown modes of a database. We have different options for shutting down a database. First option is normal mode. Normal is the default shutdown mode. In normal database shutdown, no new connections can be made. The Oracle server waits for all users to disconnect. Before completing the shutdown, database and redo buffers are written to disk. Background processes are terminated and the SG is removed from the memory. Oracle closes and dismounts the database before shutting down the instance. The next startup does not require an instance recovery. Shutdown transactional. A transactional shutdown prevents clients from losing work. In transactional database shutdown, no client can start a new transaction on this particular instance. A client is disconnected when the client ends the transaction that is in progress. When all transactions are finished, a shutdown immediately occurs. The next startup does not require an instance recovery. Shutdown immediate. In immediate database shutdown, current SQL statements being processed by oracles are not completed. The oracle server does not wait for the users currently connected to the database to disconnect. Oracle roll back active transactions and disconnect all connected users. Oracle closes and dismounts the database before shutting down the instance. The next startup does not require an instance recovery. Shutdown abort. If the normal and immediate shutdown options do not work, you can abort the current database instance. Aborting an instance proceeds with some conditions. Those conditions are current SQL statements being processed by the Oracle server are immediately terminated. Oracle does not wait for the users currently connected to the database to disconnect. Database and redo buffers are not written to the disk. 
uncommitted transactions are not rolled back the instance is terminated without closing the files the database is not closed or dismounted the next startup requires instance recovery which occurs automatically by smart managing an instance by monitoring diagnostic files diagnostic files are means to capture information about the database activities they are useful tools for you when you are performing and or managing an instance several types of data diagnostic files exist they depend on the diagnostic file that is created to solve a problem there are several types of diagnostic files let's see each of them one by one alert log file each oracle instance has an alert log file if not already created oracle creates one during instance startup the alert log file is managed by dba as it continues to grow while the database continues to work the alert log file should be the first place we look when diagnosing day to day operations or error the alert log file also contains pointer to trace files for more detailed information the alert log file keeps a record of the following information when database was started or shut down a list of all non default initialization parameters the startup of background processes the thread being used by the instance log sequence numbers log writer is writing to information regarding a log switch creation of table space and undo segments alter statements that have been issued information regarding error messages such as ora 600 and extent errors the location of the alert log file is defined by a parameter background underscore dump underscore desk and its default location on unix is dollar oracle underscore home slash rdbms slash log next is background trace files background trace files are used to log errors that have been encountered by a background process such as smon pmon database writer and other background processes these files exist only when an error requires writing to the trace files we use these files to diagnose and troubleshoot problems initially when a background trace file is created it contains header information indicating the version number of the data server and the operating system its location is defined by a parameter background underscore dump underscore dust user trace files user trace files contain statics for trace sql statements which are useful for sql training in addition user trace files contain user error messages it can be generated by a dba or by a server its location is defined by a parameter user underscore dump underscore dust by default user tracing is disabled we can enable user tracing at the session or instance level by using various commands and parameter if we want to enable tracing at session level we can use this command alter session set sql underscore trace is equal to true we can also enable user tracing at session level by executing a dbms procedure the procedure is dbms underscore system dot set underscore sql underscore trace underscore in underscore session and if we want to set it at instance level we can do it by defining a para value of parameter sql underscore trace so we will do sql underscore trace is equal to true in the initialization parameter file this is all about managing an oracle instance and various startup and shutdown modes of an oracle instance thank you